I think Nvidia's done something strange this year where they've manipulated the performance of the laptop RTX 4070s just so that they can fit into their product lineup a little bit better so they can sell more devices. And because of that, the 4070 laptops don't perform the way that I would expect them to. So I'm gonna be using the MSI Stealth lineup of products to showcase what the mid-tier stuff can and can't do. I think these are a perfect vessel to show performance. So this is the previous generation of MSI Stealth, the GS66. It's running an RTX 3070, and this is the new one, the Stealth 16 Studio. It's running an RTX 4070. It's a decent bump in performance, right? But there's nuance to this conversation here because when it comes to laptop GPUs, the performance that you get is very dependent on the amount of wattage that you pump to the laptop, right? So if you take that same chip, that 3070, and you pump it with 140 watts in a thicker and heavier laptop, you will get significantly better performance. So this new laptop from MSI, the Stealth 16 Studio, pulls 105 watts for an RTX 4070. It's about a 10% bump in power consumption for like a 25 to 30% bump in performance. It lands in between like a 3080 and a 3080 Ti, but it uses a lot less energy to do it. I would say that the performance is disappointing. It's not much better than the 3070 Ti, it's just a lot more energy efficient. So 1080p and 1440p gaming is awesome, but once you step into 4K resolutions, you start to feel the limitations of eight gigs of VRAM. Now, when you take a step back and look at the spread of the 40 series laptop GPUs, the gap between the 4070 and the 4080 is massive. Like the 4070 seems underwhelming in higher wattage laptops. But I think where the 4070 really shines is with thin and light performance laptops because with these types of devices, you are very constrained by thermal and power limitations, right? You can't pump 150 watts into a device like this. You just can't do it. And I think MSI has done a really good job with their stealth products to keep the device light and with really good performance. So this year, MSI has two completely new stealth products, the Stealth 14 Studio and Stealth 16 Studio. And they're well built, they're super solid, very little flex on the main body, and both sizes have two different colorways. They have like a star blue, which is like a navy color with a very subtle metallic sparkle to the finish, and then they have a pure white, which isn't pure white at all, it's like a white color with a slight iridescence to the finish. I like the looks on both of them, but the front logo is done in this really high contrast color, I just wish it was a more muted design on the front. So the blue 14 inch model has a fully blue chassis and it's got a blue top panel as well as a blue keyboard deck. Uh, and the moment I pulled this keyboard out of the box, I was typing quickly on it. This is a nice keyboard to type on, but the white 14 inch model has a white top panel, but the inside is black. And I don't know, I would have preferred a white interior on this. I think some people might like this, but to me it just looks weird to have such a stark contrast between the inside and outside. But when it's closed, the front and especially the back accents look really nice on that white model. And they both have these RGBs that light up to illuminate the Stealth logo on the tail end. So on both these devices, they have a bit of a kind of visual accent to them, but nothing wild. It is still a Stealth product. Now on the 16 inch models, things are a little bit different. The blue unit still has a blue top panel as well as a blue keyboard deck. Uh, the keyboard is largely the same, but it's got a number pad as well as a fingerprint sensor on the side there. But on the white model, we have a white interior. And this thing looks so cool to me. There's so few devices out there that have a fully white laptop on the inside and outside. And this is one of them. Now on the back, you have a more professional looking stealth badge that lights up. This one can't change colors. They just stay the kind of gold and white colors that they are. The screens on the Stealth 14 and Stealth 16 both have the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. They're solid screens. They're super fast with great colors, good brightness. They're awesome for games and content creation. The 16 inch model I have here with a 4070 at 105 watts, it runs kind of like a 150 watt RTX 3080. Creative workflows though don't seem much faster on the 4070. I do think it's held back by the eight gigs of VRAM and the 120 bit bus as well as the fewer cores on the 4070. Like I wouldn't be surprised if certain workflows are actually slower on the 4070 compared to the 3070. For workflows are like very dependent on video memory speed. However niche as that might be, I could see it. Uh, okay, in terms of the 14 inch though, it's a little bit slower than the 16 inch by like three to 4%, not a lot. Uh, I would have expected a much larger difference in performance considering the size of them, but I think MSI did well on the thermals on both these devices. So if you take a look at the inside, the 14 inch model has a vapor chamber to deal with the heat output a little bit better. It's got a single NVMe, it's got two removable RAM slots, which is pretty rare on a 14 inch device. The battery life is pretty good. It is a larger battery than many other 14 inch devices, but it is an Intel chip. 
The 16 inch model has more traditional heat pipes. Uh, there's no vapor chamber, there's no liquid metal, which I imagine helps to keep the price a little bit lower. It's got two NVMEs, two RAM slots. The battery life was a little bit less than I expected. It's got a huge battery, but I think the screen is drawing a little bit more juice. Now the 14 inch model runs a little bit hotter in stress tests and the fans spin a little bit louder when you're putting the laptop at full blast. Now, I don't know the exact pricing on these units, but I believe the stealth lineup starts at like 14 or 1500 bucks and it goes up as you increase the configuration. But typically MSI's stealth lineup isn't super expensive. It's usually a little bit more budget friendly. So I imagine they'll kind of stick with that mindset this year. Uh, but interestingly, when I got these things in and I was pulling them out of the box and I start to run some benchmarks, I realized that I still have all of my old Stealth products. Like I have the full lineup. I have the GTX 1070 Stealth, the RTX 2070 Stealth, the RTX 3070 Stealth, and now RTX 4070 Stealth. So I was like, okay, I should see how far these things have come because it's been like seven years. So the oldest Stealth that I have is the GS63. It's running a GTX 1070 with some thick ass bezels, but my God, the panel flex on this device was fierce. They've come so far since this product. But performance wise, man, it's so neat to see how much it's improved over the years of the Stealth product line. Now, if I take a look at the RTX 4070 laptops, when I first saw that benchmark pop up, I was disappointed. Like I had seen the 4080 and 4090 benchmarks and I was, uh, those are so awesome. I was expecting, or at least hopeful that it would be equally awesome, but it's not. They're good, but they're just not crazy awesome. But I think Nvidia is doing this with intent, right? I feel like there's a degree of, purposeful detuning of the 4070 to keep that juggling act a little bit easier for them. But it's also so that there's just more separation between the products. I think the 4080 and 4090, they price them super high and they make it that way so that it's clear that that's the best stuff. And I think they try to keep the 4070 away from it as much as possible this year. And I feel like it's in terms of business decision, it's probably for the better. Cause last year or like last generation, there were some 3070 laptops with high enough wattage that could hit really close to a 3080 laptop. That's all awesome for the consumers, but from a business perspective, like that's, that's not good, right? That's just less money. That's more people buying the cheaper stuff, which Nvidia would never want being Nvidia. Um, but yeah, the 4070, I'm a little disappointed by the performance, but if it's priced low enough, it's a good product. I think in terms of a purchase decision between like, if you're choosing between like a 40 or a 30 series, there are advantages to the 40, obviously you get DLSS3 with frame generation and stuff, but I feel like the value just can't be beat. If you can find a 30 series device that's on an aggressive enough sale, you're just gonna get better value at this kind of price point. That's just the way I see it right now. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I haven't said this phrase in a really long time, but let's go with it.